Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my refresher guide on our favorite Liwe lawyer, Yan Fei. It's been a really long time since I last made my guides on her pyro DPS and shield playstyles, but with Sumeru and Fontaine out, she's gotten a new reaction playstyle thanks to Burgeon, along with new build and teammate options. So as one of the early characters I really enjoyed and even sometimes come back to for my Abyss guides, I wanted to show Yan Fei some appreciation with this updated guide video, especially for more beginner players who are just starting to take an interest in her. And so we'll cover her kitten talents, constellations, gameplay tips, her different playstyles, builds, and team comps. Let's begin. Yanfei is a pyro catalyst unit whose kit revolves around buffing her charge attacks as her main source of pyro damage. Let's see how her talents work to achieve this. Yanfei's normal attacks consist of a three hit pyro combo, and what's special about them is that each normal attack hit gives Yanfei a scarlet seal. This is indicated by the floating seal icons around her, and they can stack up to three times or four times with her C6. Upon using her charged attack, she consumes her current seals as shown by the number, with each seal increasing the charged attack's AoE and damage multiplier. Additionally, she consumes 15% less stamina per seal for both her charged attack and sprinting. This is important to prevent her from burning through her stamina too quickly, especially with a charged attack focused playstyle. When you unlock her Ascension 1 passive, each seal consumed now grants a 5% pyro damage bonus to her for 6 seconds, and it resets after using another charged attack. Be wary of prematurely dashing jumping, or getting interrupted while your charged attack animation is playing, specifically when the stamp hasn't descended yet, as that will completely cancel the attack. After consuming, you have to restack them again by doing normal attacks or via her other abilities. These seals also disappear when switched out, so you'll have to maintain her on field if utilizing a charged attack focus playstyle. These charged attacks have no ICD or internal cooldown, which determines the limitation of how often an ability or attack can apply its element. But basically, her charged attack always applies pyro, meaning that each hit can trigger a reaction when applied to the relevant aura. That's why Yanfei's charge attacks are often used to enable reaction-based playstyles, reverse vaporize being the common choice, which is applying pyro on hydro. Though take note that her charge attacks count as blunt damage, so if used against a frozen enemy, it will typically proc shatter instead of melt or vaporize, which is detrimental to her damage. There are some cases that can make Yanfei melt or vape without shattering, or melt or vape and shatter, but those are difficult to consistently set up and usually are unsustainable. After unlocking Yanfei's Ascension 4 passive, this makes her deal an additional instance of pyro damage whenever her charged attack deals a crit hit. This attack also has no ICD, so it's possible to trigger consecutive reactions with it, but it also means she's applying pyro even faster, which can be detrimental in teams where you want to better control her pyro application. To help supplement her charged attack focus kit, we have her skill and burst. Casting Yanfei's skill deals AoE pyro damage to an enemy target, generates 3 pyro particles, and also instantly grants Yanfei the maximum number of seals. After casting her skill, your fully powered charged attack is ready to be used ASAP. Meanwhile, casting her burst deals AoE pyro damage around her and also instantly grants her maximum scarlet seals. Then for 15 seconds, Yanfei gets a charged attack damage bonus and she automatically gets a scarlet seal stack every second, which expedites her ability to cast stronger charged attacks, giving her a boost in damage output. Her skill and burst damage can also be amplified with reactions, such as first setting up a hydro aura on the enemy before casting them. Lastly, her exploration passive lets her mark Lia's specialties on the minimap for an easier material farming experience. Here are Yanfei's materials needed to ascend her and level up her talents. The unique ascension materials are the Juvenile Jade from the Primo Geo Bishop, Noctilucas Jade from Liyue, and Insignias from Treasure Hoarders. Her talents need the same Insignias, the Gold Series books from Liyue's Talent Domain, and the Blood Jade branch from Ejdaha's weekly boss fight. Moving on to Yanfei's constellations, most of them are designed to enhance her charge attack capabilities, while one constellation has a defensive purpose and unlocks a completely different role for her. C1 first Further reduces stamina consumption of charge attacks by 10% every Scarlet Seal stack and gives additional resistance interruption while casting charge attacks. This is a big help for her stamina management, making her feel easier to use and leaving even more stamina for dodging around if necessary. C2 increases Yanfei's charge attack crit rate by 20% against enemies below 50% HP. This means more consistent crits to finish off enemies faster and it synergizes with her Ascension 4 passive. C3 increases skill levels, a very minor boost. C4 
for is the most unique among her constellations. When Yanfei casts her burst, she now creates a shield that absorbs up to 45% of Yanfei's max HP for 15 seconds and absorbs pyro damage more effectively. This now enables Yanfei's shield support playstyle, which we'll cover more later on. Still, even as a pyro DPS, this is also quite helpful as shielding Yanfei helps prevent interruptions for smoother combos and the added survivability is very welcome, more so in a Burgeon team since Burgeon deals damage to your active character too. C5 increases burst level by 3 and this is more impactful than skill levels. And finally, C6 increases the maximum Scarlet Seals by 1, which ultimately gives her charge attack a higher damage ceiling and unlocks higher stamina reduction buffs, enabling zero stamina cost charge attacks with 4 seals. Most of these constellations definitely help realize her full potential as a charge attack DPS, while C4 adds a completely new role for her. For less conventional teams like Burgeon, they don't really have a significant effect on her potential. Now that we're familiar with Yanfei's base kit and what she can gain from constellations, we can go into more detail about her different possible roles and playstyles, how to build her for them, and team comp synergies to look out for. The first and traditional role is as a pyro DPS, which focuses on charged attacks and pyro damage. As such, you'll want to prioritize leveling her normal attack talent, which is the majority of her damage, followed by her burst and lastly her skill. This playstyle often uses the vaporize reaction to amplify her pyro damage, but other reactions are also possible, like melt as a more niche alternative or overload to supplement with extra AoE damage. Or she can simply use pyro damage without reactions in a mono pyro team. While she's generally not at par with a potential of other limited 5-star pyro DPSs, her performance is nevertheless still respectable in these teams with a straightforward gameplay loop. With her build, it's pretty much how most pyro DPS units go. Attack or EM Sands are both good in a reaction team, but it should only be attack in a mono pyro team since she doesn't trigger reactions there. You can balance it depending on how much she's getting from external buffs and substats. I recommend having at least 100 EM as a baseline, possibly going up to around 200 to 300 for higher end builds. For her goblet, pyro damage is generally what you want, but in specific cases where she's getting a lot of damage percent bonuses already, like with Farina on the team, attack can still be a good option. For her circlet, go for crit rate or crit damage depending on what you need for a good crit ratio. While the standard recommended ratio is as close to 1 as to 2, take note that her ascension passive takes advantage of crit hits, so you can somewhat skew her build to have more crit rate, but of course not at the expense of sacrificing too much crit damage. Aiming for 70 to 80% crit rate in a complete build is generally recommended. For substats, you're looking for crit, attack, EM, and ER. Her energy recharge target will vary depending on your team and the enemy's particle generation, and if you want to burst every rotation or every other rotation. For an easier time building her, I just recommend aiming to burst every other rotation, which you can achieve by getting around 100-120% to 120 ER. If you want to burst every rotation, her ER requirement starts going higher, that's doable, but harder to achieve and will likely come at the expense of other offensive stats. For her artifact sets, you can go for two-piece combos among Crimson Witch for the pyro damage bonus, attack sets, EM sets, and the Marichaussee Hunter for its normal and charged attack damage bonuses. This is easier to farm and gives you more flexibility to choose pieces with the right main stats and good substats. For full set options, she has a lot to choose from, though some have more general value. To start, the four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames and Wanderer's Troop are both highly recommended due to their general synergy and being strong boxable. Sumeru and Fontaine introduce new set viable options with the Gilded Dreams and Marichose Hunter sets respectively, but are currently limited to domain farming. Other conditional sets are the Shimanawa's Reminiscence, Lava Walker, and Retracing Bolide. While definitely viable, they have specific restrictions and may not generally be as efficient to farm or strongbox for her. Now for weapons, you're mainly looking for crit and attack as universal stats, EM for boosting reactions, and relevant damage bonuses. She has a ton of catalyst options available, so I'll just flash and summarize noteworthy ones. For free-to-play weapons, these are the most notable craftable and event reward weapons, so take note of their stats and passive conditions needed to maximize them. Event weapons are easily obtainable with max refinements, but if you miss them, then the craftables require billets to make and refine, which unfortunately aren't as easy to get. For 4-star gacha or BP options, the Witsith is easily the best thanks to its huge bonuses which Yanfei can all utilize in a reaction team, and it's very competitive versus 5-star options. As for 5-stars, the ones with crit, attack, and EM substats will 
will all work. Keep in mind to get balanced stats such as getting a good crit ratio or enough EM. The more recent Fontaine catalysts do have passives with HP changing mechanics, so Farina will want to be on the team to more reliably trigger those. Moving on to team synergies, starting with vaporized comps. To enable consistent vaporized reactions, Synchro and Yelan are the most reliable off-field hydro applicators and synergize with Yenfei's normal and charge attack combos. Farina by herself has slower and more inconsistent intervals of hydro application, so if using her with Yenfei, you'll generally want to pair her with Synchro or Yelan for more consistent results. Then Yenfei has different attack combos you can implement based on her teammate's hydro application in order to maximize her vaporized triggers. At the start of her field time, you want to first apply a hydro aura on the enemy so that her skill and or burst will vaporize. Then when executing her normal and charged attack combos, you'll generally do either N2Cs or N3Cs. The main difference is that N2Cs quick charge attacks mean it's best paired with fast hydro application that can prevent pyro auras, Well, N3C is a bit slower in charge attacks but better ensures that there's a hydro aura on the enemy. You can check this in practice simply by observing if Yanfei's charge attacks are indeed triggering vaporize consistently throughout her on-field time. Flex supports can be filled in by offensive buffers like Bennett or VV animal units or defensive units like Zhongli or Dia. Note though that if Yanfei is the only pyro unit on the team, like if you're going with a double hydro team, it can be difficult to swirl pyro and reduce enemies' pyro resistance. You'll still get good team damage if you swirl hydro instead, since that will increase the damage of your two hydro units, so at least it's not a total damage loss. If you add an off-field electro unit, that can turn this team into an overload vaporize or over vape team. Your hydro and electro unit can combine to trigger the electrocharged aura on the enemy, which allows hydro and electro auras to coexist. Yanfei can then apply pyro on that, which simultaneously triggers both vaporize and overload reactions. Instead of vaporize, you can also utilize forward melt reactions by applying cryo on the enemy and using Yanfei as the pyro trigger. The main difference between forward melt and reverse vaporize is that while forward melt has a higher reaction multiplier than reverse vaporize, forward melt reactions also get rid of the cryo aura quicker, so Yanfei's fast pyro application can make consistently setting up a cryo aura harder. Setting up consecutive melts can be done with fast cryo application, like having two cryo units or combining a cryo unit plus another animo that can cast a cryo-infused ability, or you can distribute who's triggering the melts, like giving Yanfei and Rosaria their own timeframes where they'll trigger forward and reverse melts respectively, and as long as your cryo DPS is sufficiently built, then they'll still deal good damage. It's important to remember that using Yanfei's charge attacks on a frozen target can likely shatter them instead of melting. There are some variations in elemental gauge setups that can allow Yanfei to get in a melt or vaporize reaction even on a frozen enemy, but these will be difficult to set up consistently. So, Overall, I would generally advise against pairing a cryo unit with a hydro unit on a Yanfei team unless you have a very specific setup in mind. You also cannot freeze bosses, and when a hydro and cryo aura both get applied on them, it simply gets rid of both auras rather than freezing them, which can lead to inconsistent reactions. In general, playing Vaporize Yanfei is easier and better, while playing Melt Yanfei requires more deliberate timing to ensure that her attacks will indeed trigger melt on a cryo affected enemy. For raw pyro power, you can simply go for a mono pyro team, which generally involves three pyro units, typically Yanfei plus Bennett, then Shangling or Dia as all field pyro units, and an animal support who will shred pyro resistance, or a geo unit. Another variation of this is just pyro units plus animal or geo units in the two flex slots. A somewhat related variation of this is an overload Chevrus team. Chevrus shreds the enemy's pyro and electro resistance when you trigger overload as long as you're only using pyro and electro teammates. In this case, Yanfei is still relying on her pyro damage and talent multiple suppliers as her main source of damage, so don't build her with full EM. With Dendro in the picture, another playstyle is as a Burgeon trigger. This uses her pyro application to trigger Burgeon cores generated by Dendro and Hydro teammates. While it doesn't make full use of her kit's capabilities, it's a pretty good gateway to Burgeon and is most effective in AoE scenarios. Her charge attacks are not super necessary, since even her normal attacks, skill, and burst are generally reliable to Burgeon the Dendro cores, although the AoE of charge attacks do help catch those spread out Dendro cores. You'll also want to prioritize leveling her to 90 to get maximum reaction damage from her. One more benefit of Yanfei's Burgeon playstyle is that it doesn't really make much use of her Scarlet Seal mechanics. This means that she's more quick swap friendly, allowing you to have more flexible rotations and potentially more skill uses among some characters with short skill cooldowns. So when it comes to building her, for the piece's main and sub stats, you're basically going full EM here. Her talent multipliers aren't as impactful anymore, so crit and attack have much less value. Energy recharge from sub stats is fine, and if you do have her C4, being 
able to generate a shield more often will help mitigate the self-damage of Burgeon. For sets, anything that gives additional EM or reaction bonuses like 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost, 4-piece Gilded Dreams, or 2-piece EM sets will raise her Burgeon potential. The differences between the full sets are very marginal, and even if you can't complete any set bonuses, just prioritize getting the full EM main stats first. Then you're also just looking for EM-based weapons. Some have passives that may provide added team utility or boost her damage a bit more. Niche non-EM weapon options are also possible, like Favonius Codex if you want to more reliably generate her C4 shield and to battery your teammates. For her Burgeon team, it requires good, consistent off-field dendro application and hydro application for dendro core generation. The hydro application also needs to be sufficient enough to reliably mitigate the burning aura as burning slows down the process of bloom reactions. For dendro applicators, Nahida is ideal thanks to her persistent AoE dendro application, and her burst gives Yanfei a big EM buff while on field. However, if you don't have her, you can still work with other dendro units like Kolei or Dendro Traveler, albeit with less potency. That leaves the fourth slot with flexible options. Having two off-field dendro units is also fine, as that triggers dendro resonance and ensures that you have ample dendro application to keep up with fast hydro application. It can also be electro, which helps weaken the burning aura, inflicts quicken on the enemy, and introduces more overload and hyper bloom reactions. For example, using Fischl is added single target damage and she's less likely to steal dendro cores, while using Kuki can turn this team into more of a mix of burgeon and hyper blooms. Hydro, cryo, and geo are also possible fourth flex slots. These elements won't disrupt the burgeon process and can also help mitigate burning. Yenfei also has a more niche full EM overload team archetype that capitalizes on overload's damage and is most suited in AoE scenarios. The general premise also is that you have teammates which will apply a lot of electro for Yenfei to consistently trigger overloads. That requires fast enough electro application through two electro teammates, the best being combos of Fischl plus Beidou or Yae, and the flex slot is preferably Animo or Chevrous to be able to shred the enemy's resistance and provide other relevant buffs. Here, Yanfei also makes use of the previously discussed attack combos, and her build options mostly follow what Burgeon wants as well. I generally prefer her Burgeon teams over this, especially when you can combine it with an Electro for overloads and hyperblooms too, but just know that this full EM overload playstyle is indeed an option. Lastly, we have Yanfei's shield support playstyle after unlocking her C4. Yanfei's shield can be considerably good if you focus on building her HP. While there are other dedicated and generally better shields from other elements, her being a pyro shielder has its own specific benefits, such as unlocking pyro resonance for another pyro DPS and helping set up pyro swirls. Toma is her only direct competition for pyro shielding, and his kit's definitely more focused on shielding. However, some key differences are that her having no off-field pyro application can be beneficial to prevent unwanted reactions, and whereas Toma relies on normal attacks to strengthen his shield, Yanfei's shield has no requirements of any sort. As a drawback though, if Yanfei's shield breaks prematurely, the only way to regain it is by using her burst again, which can be quite inconvenient. For this playstyle, you don't have to focus on leveling her talent since the shield scaling comes purely from her C4, though raising her to level 90 will increase her potential max HP. For the build, she mainly wants a lot of HP to increase her shield health and enough energy recharge to ensure she can reliably burst to create her shield. Having around 200% ER is a generally safe goal, but that can go higher or lower depending on other factors. If you also build her with a Favonius Codex, which requires the user to do crit hits to activate its effect, then you'll want some crit rate as well, whether from her circlet or substats. For her sets, you can easily go for a two-piece combo of HP and ER sets to give her the stats she mainly wants. You can also do a double combo of HP sets, just ensure you reach her ER target. Alternatively, going for a four-piece noblesse set lets her have additional support utility by giving a team-wide attack buff after using her burst. Four-star sets like Instructor and Exile also have added team utility effects, but their 4-star rarity means a lower stat ceiling. I should also mention to avoid the 2-piece retracing bowl line, since putting on shield strength bonus on her does not affect how the shield is on other teammates. You can check out my video explaining shield strength to see why that's the case. For her weapon options, there are only a few recommended ones, which are fortunately easy to obtain. An all-around option is the prototype Amber, which is craftable. It gives HP, and after using her burst, it refunds a bit of her own energy, which helps her energy needs, and it even heals the entire team a bit, which is helpful if ever some enemy damage gets through. 
Alternatively, there's the Favonius Codex, which gives a lot of ER and lets her battery the entire team to help bring down her own and her teammates' ER targets. It just needs some crit rate to reliably trigger the particle generation effect. Last is the Thrilling Tales, which gives HP and gives a huge attack buff to the next teammate you switch into after the user. With this, just make sure your rotation makes the DPS switch after Yanfei to take advantage of its effect. However, you'll have to compensate with getting a lot of ER from her artifacts to burst reliably. When it comes to team comps, Yanfei's shielding is generally appreciated by any team or DPS that wants a shielder. And since her pyro application is very limited and non-existent once she's off-field, there's no worry about her interrupting the main reactions of your team. Fellow pyro units that can highly appreciate Yanfei's shield utility more than usual are Hu Tao, Linny, and Yoimiya. Yanfei's shield helps Hu Tao have more control over her HP and prevent unwanted interruptions, and timing Yanfei's pyro application can allow a VV-equipped animal unit to swirl pyro to boost Hu Tao's damage. Linny also appreciates shielding a lot since his charged aimshot playstyle can leave him vulnerable to getting interrupted, so Yanfei will address that while also keeping in line with Linny's usual monopyro template. And that's it for this Yanfei guide! Considering her multiple playstyle options now, I'm interested to know in the comments how you like to build and play her. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! Well, I guess I've mastered both the pen and the sword. <sighs> I've been lucky to have you with me through to the end of my training.